Hey, Atrix fans, Josh Starr. I have AJ Galanti here, and uh, we're going to take a lap around the rink. Thanks for joining us. You ready to get to it? Let's do it, man. All right. Getting inducted into our Ring of Honor, our inaugural class coming up on February 19th. What, is the, what does the honor really mean to you and coming back here after all these years? It's just so surreal, you know? I mean, uh, like I said, it's, we announced this team almost 18 years ago, you know, to the day, you know, and it's like, you know, of course, at the time, you, 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 you hope for the best, hope it becomes like a big thing, but never in a million years did we ever anticipate it becoming, you know, the team, the, the lure of the trashers and all this, you know, becoming what it was. You know, I played high school hockey here, so it, it's weird. You know, I was playing high school hockey here from like 02 to 04, you know, so it's, it's weird, you know, it's a lot of memories, you know, even like where I was hitting people and stuff like that and, uh, you know, I obviously spent a lot of time in a penalty box, so it's, it's <laughs> weird being on this level. You know, when you're on the ice, it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's cool, man. It's, it's, uh, it's just such an honor. And yeah, when you come back here, you, you talk about those memories, and you, know, you, you, you had some on the ice, like you said, but yeah. a, a lot of your memories came up in that box. Uh, the oh, yeah. famous AJ Cam, everything. What do, you, what do you remember from that time, just watching the game and, and what it was like in this building? It's electric, man. You know, I mean, it was like, uh, it, it just, it brings me back to a different time, you know, even just times were just different, you know, it, it, it wasn't that, it doesn't seem that long ago, but it's almost two decades ago, you know, and uh, just was crazy. It was just, it was electric. It was, uh, you know, I could like pick out spots on the ice and I, I could think of like a incident or a moment or, you know, good or bad that happened. And, uh, you know, just looking out, thinking to the fans, you know, section 102, obviously. And uh, yeah, man, but. The hat trick's got it too, man. I'm telling you, it's it's uh, every time I've come to a hat trick game, it's it's that same feeling, you know. Yeah. So it, it's good that um, you know the the tricks are carrying the carrying the uh, the baton, man. It's yeah. it's awesome to see. Yeah, it's uh, it, yeah, we're happy to be here, and uh, you know, it's it all started with you guys back 18 years ago. So uh, when you when you did start, what what were the expectations for you? I know. Uh, you know, it, it comes out in the documentary. Your, your dad kind of just handed you the team. What, <laughs> yeah. what were you thinking at that time, and, and what really were you expecting from the whole experience? No expectations, no plans. It was just like winging it each day. It felt that's how it felt, especially in the beginning. It was just kind of like, you know, when we announced the team, you know, you're talking about April. You know, our, our season doesn't start till October, so you're like, oh, we got plenty of time to figure this out, and then it's like. Before you know it, it's June, July, August, September. We're like a month out and a lot of the construction wasn't even done. And, you know, that panic starts to, starts to set in. But um, you know, I give my father credit, man. He was the visionary. He kind of like, he saw it. He, he was never panicked about it. He's like, it's going to get done. And literally like 15 minutes, I remember it was October 15th, 04, our first ever game. It's like 15 minutes before doors opened. They were still welding stuff. Wow. Two of my best friends in high school were helping welding stuff up there. I was just like, this is insane. It's like, it's like we just beat, it was, it was a buzzer beater, bro. It, we, we got it done like by the minute almost. It's, it's, it's insane. <laughs> wow, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. And who would, who would know what would have happened if uh, that first night wasn't, wasn't I remember made. the night before our first game. So we're talking October 14th, 04. It was a Thursday night. We're here, we're, we're kind of like doing our last run through, you know, not that we were doing anything major, but, and I remember I was on the ice with the kid that played our mascot, Scrappy. It was just us on the ice. It was probably 11 o'clock at night. There was no one else here, really. It was just us. We were just like kind of taking it all in, like, wow, what's going to happen tomorrow, you know? And I remember we were just joking around and I, I busted myself right on the blue line. I slipped and I like banged my head and I remember... You're so delirious from like so much work and it's like all this adrenaline. And I just remember looking up the lights laughing just so hard. And I, and I was just like, now that I look back, it was kind of like, that was kind of like the perfect moment, like, like previewing what was to come with this team, man. Cause yeah. I don't think any of us really expected it to happen like that. But I remember the night before real light, right before midnight, I, <laughs> I busted over there and I fell and I was laughing and, uh, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, if you look up at those lights now, you still you still see the trashers blew up. Yeah, no, it's still there, man. It's <laughs> it's still there. It's it's crazy. It's it's crazy to think. I remember when I played high school. To you know, 
the, the bleacher, you know, the bleachers ended where, you know, those white stripes are, you know, it was, a, it was like just a cross. There was a wall up there. So it's like my dad blew the wall out extra there. This was just a big wall. So I remember when it was just like when the rink first opened, you know, so, you know, my roots are here. You know, I, I have my roots are. I mean, I, I, I rem it brings back a lot of memories. It yeah, really does. I'm sure and your, your roots are going to be on that wall. Yeah. Forever. What, it's, what is, it's, uh, it's, what is that it's like? surreal, man. It's, it's, uh, it's bigger to me than going up at Madison Square Garden because, you know, it's like this is this is home. You know, I never left home. And, you know, like you said, this is where we started. And, you know, uh, even before the Trashers were even a thing, I was here. So it's it's uh, it's really cool. It's it's uh, it's an honor. And, you know, we're, we're very grateful. That's that's amazing. And your family was such a big part of of the Trashers and, you know, the the team since then have, have kept your family and the whole Danbury yeah. hockey family involved. And uh, it's it's amazing to still see you yeah. involved here with the hat tricks and no, of you know, course, with, with all the teams that have come through. Well, that's what it's all about is, you know, we wanted to create something for the city. You know, it's it's whether it's the Trashers or the Whalers or the hat tricks, it doesn't really matter. You know, look, we would have loved it to be the Trashers, you know, but things didn't work that way. But the fact that um, we helped, you know, kind of lay the foundation for, for teams like the hat tricks now is that's, you know, I hear about the hat tricks all the time around town, you know, even when we're not talking about hockey, you know, see kids with shirts and stuff. So just to have, you know, uh, an ownership group and a team, you know, like I said, you know, carry the legacy. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing. That's that's the whole reason my dad started this was, you know, to create something for 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 town, you know? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, the, the town's still definitely really involved and uh, everyone here loved seeing the documentary come out and, and all the characters <laughs> in it. Uh, Section 102 going nuts. Oh, what, man. what has it been like since since the documentary came out? It sounds dramatic, but it was life changing. I mean, it literally was life changing, especially with my data. I mean, I haven't changed, but like my day to day life just changed overnight. I mean, you're talking with people on a daily basis um, from all over the world that that know about this team and want to know more and want, you know, ask you stories and questions and buying merch. And it's insane. I, I, I never I never uh, really expected it to. It was funny, the week before I was talking to my wife, I'm like, I don't know how many people are actually going to watch this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you just don't know. Yeah. It's a documentary and uh, man, I tell you, it's been uh, it's been it's been something else. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's national, international reach. It's not just out here in Danbury. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, you've been interviewed by a ton of different places. Um, that trasher's name is is never gonna die now, um, and you know that has to be that has to be really special. Yeah, it's 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 you know like you said. I mean, when my dad had this vision way back, I don't think any of us expected it to be like a world renowned name now. You know what I mean? And it's like it's crazy. It's it's um you know I've always been big on legacy. You know, it's not about the money. It's it's the legacy you leave and. Um, you know, history, I was, I, school history was probably my favorite subject, you know, and it's part of, you know, it's, it's, it's always been part of local history, but now, especially in the hockey world, it's like you said, an international thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to comprehend, honestly. It's, it's only been six months since the doc dropped and it's like, feels like years now, you yeah. know, so we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Talk about history and there's plenty in this building. Uh, you, you talked a little bit earlier about you could you could name a spot on the ice and yeah. remember something about it. We're stopped just about right in front of Section 102 here. Oh yeah. What is your favorite 102 memory from you know, from your time either watching up from the box or being on the ice, whatever it was? But the the Trashers made 102 yeah. a, a historical figure. Yeah. So what do you remember the most from that? Well, you know, it's, they were so much part of the, our legacy. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to tell, tell the story to Trashers without Section 102. You know, they, um, I mean, literally from the first game, I remember October 15th, 04, our inaugural season, our first ever game, the national anthem audio just cut out in the middle. And they just, in unison, picked up and sung. Like, wow. <laughs> maybe a hundred of them just sung. And it was like, from that moment, it was like, wow, they, they got our backs, you know? And, um, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing body bags put over the glass. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing the hell's horn, that, that horn. And uh, 
you know, it's funny. I can look in and see faces. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like some of the names I forget, but you know, if I hear them, I'm like, oh yeah, his name. You know, they had nicknames. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, they were wrestlers almost. And uh, <laughs> but I could see them. I could see like they were in a specific order. I, I could see it. And uh, it's driving the driving the opponents mad, man. They're, like just driving them crazy. It's just I see it. I can still see it. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a infamous section for sure <laughs> they're, and they're still at it today exactly yes i know they they haven't let up so they uh like i said they're part of that history they're part of they they are like i tell people you, you can't tell the story of trashers or danbury hockey without without that without that you know they have to on a smaller on a much smaller level i mean they're to me as infamous as the bleacher creatures at yankee stadium or the black hole with the Raiders and stuff. I mean, they're up there as far as I'm concerned, you know? Hey. I, obviously, I'm a little biased, <laughs> but uh, I, they got to be up there, you know? They have just as much of a persona yeah. now as, as those other groups. 100%. Do. 100%. Mm-hmm. They, they, and they had an impact. They had an impact. I mean, our second season, you know, trying to get players um, that played against us the first year, they'd sign with us. I remember David Heimovitz. He played for Richmond the first year. I remember we signed him the second season, great player, veteran. And he said to me, I'm glad I'm on your guys' side because he goes, that Danbury flu. Whenever we came to Danbury, guys mysteriously were sick or uh, an old injury from 10 years ago just magically flared up just to get scratched. So, you know, that Danbury flu, that, uh, that was a real thing. And um, a lot of guys, a lot of opponents that first year who came with us the second year told us this same thing. They're like, we hated hated coming here hated it so it was, it was they did their, the 102 did their job they uh you know they they played just as just a part of it yeah it was it was an outstanding atmosphere every night and probably right where we're standing there was a few few fights oh yeah uh, they, oh yeah they, they loved that uh, what's maybe one fight that sticks out to you wwe night when john cena was here and and i think it was 2005 at that point it was wwe night we had john cena up there and I remember we had a gentleman by the name of Chad Wagner who subsequently got suspended for life after this game. And uh, I remember it was right about here. He uh, started a line brawl. We had Marassi on the ice, Dave McIsaac, Coach Mack was on the ice, <laughs> broke a guy's nose on Adirondack right there. <laughs> and uh, Chad Wagner tried to pull um, the head coach of the Adirondack Frostbite right over the, right over the boards there. <laughs> when, I, when I see right here, that's what I say. And I could show you AJ Cam, I have it on tape. <laughs> I'll show you after we tape. I'm telling you, it started with Chad Wagner and uh, Coach Mack, man, he broke, uh, his name His name was Francis Backerlick. He played on Adirondack. I don't know why I remember this. <laughs> Coach Mack popped him one time. He dropped like a sack of potatoes, broke his nose right on the spot, right there, right on that Grand Prix, right along that Grand Prix uh, wow. section there. Wow. So now I remember that vividly. I remember uh, time playing Quad City after the game. There was a skirmish, you know, every, it was a big get together here. Coach Mack was in the middle of that as well. <laughs> Our coach at the time, Paul Gillis, kind of got into it. So, I mean, anywhere, like any part of this ice, I, if I really think about it, you know, I could tell you. I mean, uh, and negative things too. I mean, Brad Wingfield getting hurt over there. I mean, I, I can just see it, you know. Um, it, it's crazy, you know. Yeah. It's just crazy like, being down on this level and, and thinking about it. Like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. yesterday, 18 years ago. But yeah. <laughs> I remember for sure. So, great well, times. Dave Mack, the uh, head coach of the Hattricks now, is, uh, we love having him here, and he got the crowd going a whole, oh, a whole yeah. bunch back in the day. Oh, yeah. Diamond Dave. He was uh, one of the best, man. Legend. And he was a little older at the time when he came to the track. He wasn't technically in his prime, and he was, uh, he was putting it on the younger opponent. So he was, uh, remember Coach Mack right here against Robin Big Snake, Rockford. Right here, a good fight, good scrap. I mean, I, like I said, I mean... He was a he was a huge part of the team. I mean, he was our captain our second year. You know, big big part of the big part of the legacy. And you know, fighting was was a big part of, of the Trashers game. He was right in the middle of it. Oh all yeah, the time. he was not he was not an easy out. When you if you drop the gloves with him, <laughs> you have a long 30, 40 seconds there. You know. <laughs> and you're setting up uh, your own new venture here with with some fighting on ice. Uh, tell yeah. us a little about about it. It's called Ice Wars. Life comes full circle sometimes, you know, and, uh, you know, I remember um, our second season of the Trash is like midway through the season. I remember hearing about a promotion that was going on, Battle of the Hockey Enforcers, mm. <coughs> excuse me, 
up in Canada somewhere, Prince George, British Columbia. And um, actually some of the trashers during the off season were interested in participating. It's like a tournament style. And uh, I remember it, you know, we lost a team. I kind of lost track with hockey or, you know, that tournament, you know, really didn't mean anything to me at that point. And uh, 16 years later, we, we kind of get the call. They're looking, that group's looking to bring it back. And um, they reached out to myself, my father, and uh, wanted us on board. And I've kind of been dealing with a lot of the creative and, you know, rebranding it and, uh, you know, the on ice stuff. And yeah. it's going to be wild, man. It's going to, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Prize fighting on ice, um, only been done really once, but uh, it's going to be a lot different this time. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, it's not going to be for everyone, just like mm -hmm. the trashers, but the people that are into combat sports, people that are into hockey, they're going to, I think, instantly fall in love with it. So yeah. I think Dan Barry will, will love it too. Um, well, this has to be the host for one of them one day, 100%. It, it has to, it may not be for this year, you know, we're kind of like doing a pilot episode, kind of uh, the first two this summer, but um, definitely going forward, it, uh, it, it's, it's a necessity that it has to happen here. Oh, this is where it would belong. Oh, 100%, 100%. And it's funny because I was talking to some of the guys here at the rink and um, we're, we're putting together a Hall of Fame, basically, you know? We're basically a new sport, a new league, Ice Wars, but uh, we're gonna have an Ice Warrior legend kind of Hall of Fame. And I told the guys, hey, listen, save us some wall space. This gotta be the Hall of Fame spot <laughs> for Ice Wars. So, you know, it'll be, it'll be kind of cool to honor some of the old enforcers that kind of, you know, and their careers kind of unceremoniously com compared to like, you know, the goal scorers and yeah. the, you know, the Hall of Fame guys. So hopefully Danbury will be the home for the blue collar, uh, old extinct enforcers. <laughs> so it's, it's something where we're toying with and uh, it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. That would be awesome. We're excited to see it. Definitely. Um, as, as we wrap up here, our, our lap with AJ Galanti, uh, you look up at that wall now and your name is going to be there alongside your dad and yeah. a few other greats, including Dave McIsaac, Matt Caranti and Nick Niedert. Yeah as part of the first ever class in the ring of honor you you uh you get to you know kick it off what's what's that going to be like i don't know i don't really know i think <laughs> i think it'll kind of hit me when i come in and you know it's it's uh you know like i said i mean to me this is bigger than getting a banner raised at msg you know i mean this is home and uh you know like you like we just talked like for a few minutes about the history i mean it, it means a lot it's uh it's special you know and to be up there with my dad obviously it's uh you know, who started this whole thing, it's, it's a really special thing. So, you know, I can't, I can't thank the hat tricks enough, the rink, and uh, really looking forward to, you know, see what the future brings. Well, we're really excited to honor you, honor the Trashers history, your family's history here in this building, and uh, everyone else who's been part of the Danbury hockey family throughout the years. It's, uh, it's gonna be a great night, February 19th. AJ will head into the Danbury hockey ring of honor, right up inside Danbury Arena here when the Hattricks host the Columbus River Dragon. So AJ, thank you so much for thank doing this. Thank you guys, always. It's a, it's a great time and uh, we'll see you on Alumni Night on February 19th.